Hey guys, this is Neil. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm finally going to start doing easy tutorials again. This was a request a few months ago. This viewer asked if I could make a herb tutorial and I have thought about this before but I wanted to do a few so I think I'm just going to slowly do this and turn it into a playlist. So there will be more coming but I still will be posting alongside of other things. Today we will be painting sage. My plan is to paint herbs including the flowers for the beginner level tutorials but after I finish the playlist I'm thinking of combining it all together into a painting that you guys can paint along with. This is the initial plan anyway, let's hope I can keep my word. I have to say that I'm a bit rusty doing this since I haven't made one for quite a while but either way I hope you guys enjoy it. Like usual we're going to start with some drawings just to get you acquainted with the shapes. Sage leaves are similar to little ovals, they're long and it has little pointed tips but mostly rounded and you can try to draw this out from different angles if you notice the leaf will become more of a half oval with a slanted bottom when it's seen from the side but you can also try to practice different angles too but I'm just going to do these two for the painting. For the flowers I'm just going to do one stem and I'm going to draw random shapes with one to up to three petals and draw them on each side of the stem getting smaller as you get to the top so you create somewhat of a triangular shape or composition for the overall flowers. For the stem I'm just going to create one long one in the middle and you can add a couple branching out each side or you can just do one. It's really up to you. You can vary this how you would like but I suggest to not do too many or else painting it will become a little bit of a hassle because it'll be disturbing the leaves that you're going to paint afterwards. You can also vary the direction and the size of the leaves so it looks more organic and for the flowers I just do them right at the top of the plant but you can also add it to the main stem and even the branches right at the very top. I'm going to keep the color simple for the leaves I'm just going to do a mixture of viridian and yellow ochre and also a mixture of viridian and burnt umber. The browns are mostly there to just make the overall color a little bit of a warmer tone and you can even mix all the three colors together. By this I mean you can take both of the greens that you've created using those color mixtures to create different shades of the green in between. I will include a little bit of my color mixing on the palette so maybe it'll give you a better understanding afterwards. As for the flowers, I'm going to use a mixture of purple lake and red purple. The purple lake is actually from my Cottonman palette, but because I don't have sort of a pinkish color, I used the red purple from Pantel. You can also switch this to any rose color that you have, or even just keep it just the purple color. I personally wanted the purple to look a little bit more pinkish, that's why I decided to mix in a little bit of the red purple in, but it's totally optional for you. Now let's try to paint the leaves. Instead of doing the leaves as one stroke, I'm going to paint it as if I'm drawing it out, filling out any gaps that needs to be filled and so on. For the herbs painting, I decided to use three brush sizes. You can try to switch the brushes at this stage just to see what's most comfortable for you. For the leaves, I personally like to use my larger one which is a size 14 reefs and also my art media size 2 for smaller leaves and for the smaller details I decided to use my Sekaido liner brush which is also a size 2 but has a longer and thinner tip than the art media. This is why sometimes I'm quite hesitant at giving away brush sizes because it really depends on how large you want to make your painting. The smaller you want your painting to be, the smaller your brush should be and so on. You can technically use a larger brush for smaller details or smaller paintings but it would take much more brush control to do so. The sizes also differ from brand to brand, so it's better to experiment on your own to see which brushes you're most comfortable using for the painting size that you would usually make. I'm going to show you as I'm doing the flowers now. For the first one, I'm going to use my size 14 Reeves brush, and as you can see, it's still very doable. You can still paint with it. But because it carries much more water, you really need to control it. Sometimes you'll end up creating small puddles for your smaller details and it takes quite a while to dry um, instead of creating something a little bit more delicate for small flowers. For the second one, I'm going to use my Art Media brush. Just so you can see the difference, it's a little bit easier to control and you can get much finer details without having a hard time.
Now I'm just going to do another one. You can practice as much as you want before painting it as a whole just to get yourself more comfortable with all the shapes that you're going to paint later. After painting all these, I want everything to be dry and I'm going to paint a new layer on top of the leaves just to define some of the shapes and add a little bit of detail. For this painting, I'm actually using a normal drawing paper and not watercolor paper so it absorbs and dries differently than normal watercolor paper. I know a lot of my viewers are starters and beginners and sometimes you might not have watercolor paper on hand because you might run out or something. So I'm just going to show you that it's also doable as long as you don't do too heavy washes like if you would for landscape paintings. As you can see for the finer details, I decided to switch to my liner brush which has a pointy tip and this makes it much easier to paint thin lines for the leaves. As you can see previously, I just darkened the inner color of the leaves for the angled one and for the leaves facing upright, I just drew simple veins to add a little bit of detail. For the flowers, I also added a little bit of darker purple where it's closer to the stem just to add a little bit more interest. When you're ready and you feel like you've had enough practice, you can combine everything together into a painting. Feel free to paint along with me, but of course you can also create your own composition and your own interpretation of the subject. To start off, I'm just going to paint the stem so I get a good idea on where to place the leaves. I'm going to paint the leaves around the stem while varying the colors that I use and also the direction and the angles in which the leaves are pointing. At this point, I'm just going to do a base layer to map out the composition of the painting. As you can see, this is what I meant before about mixing the greens together. From the two green mixtures that I created in the beginning, I'm just going to make a pool of them on my palette and I'm going to mix them together to vary the shades of the green by mixing them little by little. Now I'm just going to use all these different mixtures and paint the leaves and I'll get back to you when we move on to the next step.
Now I'm going to take the darker mixture off the green and place the darker color in the middle of the leaves as the vein. And I'm not going to overboard with the vein at the moment, I'm just drawing the middle. And also I'm going to do the inside of the angled leaves using the darker color to show that it's in shadow. I'm just doing this roughly because we will go over this later on again when we redefine everything after the whole painting dries for the second layer. I'm also going to add some leaves where I feel like I need to add some with the darker colors. Adding the darker green will suggest a little bit more depth into the painting. Now I'm going to start painting the base of the flowers. I wanted to leave one of the branches as leaves, but I kind of forgot. I would suggest to not do as many flowers as I did because I think it takes away from the leaves since this is intended to be a her painting, not a flower painting. So you can take that into consideration as you're painting this, but of course if you like the flowers, you can even do more of that. It's up to you in the end. At this point, I'm almost done with painting the base composition of this painting and now is a good time to take a step back and have a look at the painting as a whole. If you would like to add more leaves or flowers in certain places, you can do so. Sometimes if you focus too much on the painting, you sometimes forget to look at it as a whole. That is why sometimes as a beginner, the painting or the drawing you make might look a little bit wonky because it might not look balanced. And I'm still also very guilty of that because that is also why I forgot to leave one of the branches for the leaves only. <laughs> now that the rest of the painting is dry now, I'm going to use my liner brush and increase the darkness of certain parts of the painting to create better contrasting values for the painting. I'm also going to add some finer lines for the rest of the veins of the leaves to create a little bit more interest and detail.
To finish the painting off, I'm going to add some purple to where the flower is touching the stem to give it a little bit of a gradient effect. You could do this in the beginning, but it might be a little bit hard finding the right timing if your painting is small like mine, because the small shapes might just puddle up and the darker purple that you create might spread too fast into the puddle. Because this is a smaller painting, I decided to do it as a different layer, but if you made a larger painting than mine, you can also do a little bit of the wet on wet technique. And that's it for this painting. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I haven't done beginner tutorials for a while, so I feel like I'm a little bit rusty, but hopefully you still get something out of this tutorial and learn something new. Thank you so much for watching till the end, and don't forget if you give this a go and you would like to show me, you could tag me on Instagram so I can take a look at what you've created. Like usual, I'll link my Instagram and other things in the description box if you're interested. Thanks again, and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!